All right, this is an interesting one, but a good one at the same time. So, Filip Hergovic's co-trainer, Ronnie Shields, who was actually a very underrated trainer, a very underrated trainer is Ronnie Shields, has confirmed this is with Wara Week Radio N1. Forgive my ignorance, never even remotely heard of them. But he has confirmed that Filip Hergovic versus Daniel Dubois is in talks for June the 1st in Saudi Arabia. Now, June the 1st is the... We haven't had an announcement nor a press conference. I would imagine, given the fact that we're not too far away from the month of April, April into May into June, we would not be a million miles away from getting an announcement slash press conference for this fight, which is obviously going to be... I have to think there, Arda Baturbia versus Dimitri Bivol. That's going to be the main event, obviously undisputed, light heavyweight world title. The talk is that we're going to get the Matchroom 5v5 on that show as well. Now, Hergovic was working co-promotional deal, Sauerland and Matchroom. He was fighting on the zone. Apparently, that deal has come to an end. Apparently so, all right? Now, you don't know. He could resign. He could, maybe that's why they're talking about it. I don't know. But what I do know is that Filip Hergovic is the IBF mandatory challenger. He's been mandatory challenger since the Anthony Joshua, Alexander Rusek card. He beat Zidi Zhang for that right. He is waiting for that crack. And, you know, I've always said this about mandatory challengers. They are not obliged to take on... You know, Joe Joyce was mandatory with the WBO. He was interim champion. He wasn't obliged to take Zidi Zhang on. It wasn't like the WBO said, well, you have to wait, so while you're waiting, defend your title against the next best. No, he chose to do that. It reared up in a bit mini ass. Simple as. He chose to do that. And you could say the same about Zilly Zhang. You know, he wasn't technically obliged to fight Joseph Parker. Dangerous fight. He was WBO interim champion. And that title almost seems cursed now at this stage. It's like, how the hell? I don't want it. <laughs> now, you get it, you lose. That seems to be the way it is. You get it, you lose. It's like you become interim WBO champion. You're like, all right, brilliant. Oh, no, got taken it out. So if I was Joseph Parker, I'd be chucking that title in the bin ASAP. Because that's, that almost seems cursed at this stage. But yeah, you're not, you get the gist of it. You're not obliged to fight the next available, the next best available, I should say. But I've often said that there should be a limit to how low you can go. And in my opinion, Filip Hergovic, he didn't just cross that limit, he jumped right over it. He ran straight through it when he fought Mark DeMorey on that day of reckoning card. Absolutely ridiculous fight. It was completely pointless. What, what was the point in fighting someone who. Your IBF mandatory. You are in the top 10 of the heavyweight division. If Mark DeMori was put in there with Moses Atelma, who was 19 years old at the very start of his career, I would turn around and say, what the hell is Frank Warren doing? Because you can move him faster than that. That's a 19-year-old who's not even fought for an area title. And I'd be saying, that's not good enough. Your IBF mandatory. Why the hell are you fighting him? So... That just wasn't good enough for me. And on the same card, Daniel Dubois, caught off the back of a loss to Alexander Rusek, where he, let's face it, quit. He went in there and he had a real, real... I don't want to say he had a necessarily a tough fight, per se. He had some tough moments in that Jarrell Miller fight because he was pretty much in control for the majority. It was the mid-rounds, kind of rounds three to five there, thereabouts, where he started. He started looking and thinking, hmm. But he came through it. He passed that test and ended up taking Jarrell Miller out of there. So it was a very good performance from Dubois. He has mentioned Filip Hergovic in the past. I think there was a clip of him hitting the bag or something mentioning Hergovic. So he seems keen for it. Hergovic, it's, it's an interesting one. Because when I was looking at Hergovic on the come up, I quite like what I saw. He was a lot lighter than he is now. He was in the, I think the 220s, 230s. He was a good, but you could see he was lighter than he is now. Now he's coming in a bit heavier. He's looking just... Not the same. Again, the Zilly Zhang performance. I looked at that and thought, okay, Zhang is obviously better than I gave him credit for. And obviously, Philip Hergovic was dealing with some personal issues at the time, which could, you know, some people, it, it spurs them on, some it holds them back a bit. And I kind of thought, okay, not an ideal situation outside the ring for Philip Hergovic. Combine that with Zhang being better than we thought, I can see why he struggled a bit in that fight and some people felt that he lost. A year later, he fights Dempsey McKeon who was not even on the same level as Zilly Zhang. And although he didn't, oh, I don't want to say he struggled in it, he didn't really, but it was a very lackluster, lackadaisical performance by Philip Hurley, which was really poor. And then it's like, you sat in the 12th round, you could have done that a lot earlier. 
and you know a lot earlier and then obviously he fights Mark Demore who was just an absolute pudding so Hergovic hasn't been looking the greatest lately his form hasn't been amazing you contrast that to Daniel Dubois yes he lost to Alexander Rusek he as far as I'm concerned that was a very good performance by Alexander Rusek it was I mean people love to look at that fight and say oh it was terrible and he looked I was like no I thought Usyk looked absolutely fine in that fight I really did I think Dubois was a bit more aggressive than Joshua it showed and he had a little bit of success but for the most part it was like Alexander you couldn't make a case he was winning rounds in there apart from maybe round five but other than that you really couldn't make a case that he was that it was a close fight up until the stoppage no but nevertheless Alexander Usyk is a hell of a lot better than the Mark Demore lost to him Took the O of Jarrell Miller in a real tough fight, but showed a lot of grit in that fight, which is something that we wanted to see from Dubois. He is the younger man. And I think just coming into this fight, he's probably, yeah, it's safe to say he does have the better form. Does that mean he necessarily wins? That I don't know. It's a very interesting fight if it happens. Look, I'd love to see it. I really would. I think that two big heavyweights, Dubois, if he wins, could potentially either find himself rematching Alexander Usek could have a fight with Tyson Fury, potentially. Could end up fighting for a vacant title. Could end up fighting Anthony Joshua. Because isn't Joshua ranked highly? Isn't he number two by the IBF? There are thereabouts. So if he beats Filip Hergovic, there's a lot to come. If Hergovic wins, well, you know, same you know, status quo is the same as it is. Potentially big fights. Potentially you could fight the winner of Fury Usyk, potentially. Or at the very least, you're going to fight for a vacant title. So... A lot to gain for Daniel Dubois, a lot to lose for Filip Hergovic. And it's a tough, it's going to be a tough fight. I'd love, honestly, this is a good fight. If it's part of the matchroom versus Queensbury show, or you know that kind of way, that element's going to be on it, fair enough. If it's not, if it's just a standalone fight, that co-main event is a brilliant co-main event. I really like it. And yeah, a lot of people, some people have rated Hergovic very highly, like myself. Other people have just said he's good but not great. And what they mean by that is he's just a fairly run-of-the-mill heavyweight. He can punch a bit, but most heavyweights can punch. He can take a good shot. I think everyone's in agreement about that. But there's not that well wow factor about Hergovic. Even when he was lighter, there wasn't that. That's what some people say. So a lot of people would look at this fight as a real, real pick and 50-50 fight. It'd be a real interesting fight. And... Listen, if Daniel Dubois goes in there, does a job on Hergovic, damn, you know, Don Charles really has done something that I didn't think, not only that I didn't think Dubois would be capable of, but Don Charles of all people, if he does, we're talking about ifs there. But that's my thoughts on this. Let me know yours in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the video, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, as always, if you haven't already. And for now, I'll leave it there. Peace.